not change your browsers. Might as well, might as well get into our next interview. Yeah. I was going to say into our next guest, but that it's not that kind of show. It's definitely not that kind of show. I've seen our guest. It could be. Shut up. If I was invited to, I would wear you like a skin suit. Just get inside your whole body and walk around. Squeak. At least, let's make an introduction first. I do the comedy here, bro. I'm sorry. <sighs> our next guest... Uh, is this year's winner of Miss Exotic World, reigning queen of burlesque at the Burlesque Hall of Fame. <laughs> She's a very talented dancer and performer. Alarm Nation, please put your hands together for Miss Poison Ivory. Hello. Hey. How you doing, Ivory? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Fine, thank you. So, I mean, how did you get started in, in dancing? In dancing or burlesque? Specifically? Well, burlesque specifically. Okay. So um, I got into burlesque actually years after I had, you know, quit performing. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a sad story, but when I still lived in um, California, I found myself in a bad situation, a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved here to New York, I was looking for something to help me feel comfortable in my own skin again, to like rediscover my femininity just I, I needed something to kind of save myself from the place that I was in and I um, I saw this documentary called a wink and a smile about the Seattle School of Burlesque and I really loved how it was all of these different women from different walks of life lawyers teachers all coming to uh, take this class just so they can feel more confident in themselves and so um, I never had any intention on actually becoming a burlesque performer but um, my friend signed me up for the my, for the classes for my birthday and oh eight mile style yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so it it was one of those things I just did my first performance um, it was a student showcase and it was going to be a one time thing and I was backstage crying before I stepped out for the first time that's how scared I was but you know halfway through my number with the seven people or so that were in the audience they started clapping and screaming and I don't know there was something about that that really made me feel like for the first time I was getting applause for my own choreography not recreating somebody else's thing it was my own story that I was telling not recreating somebody else's story so I think with that I got a little bit addicted and four and a half years later here I am well, we're glad to have you here. Before, how do you go about putting together a performance? Um, everybody has their own process. For me, when I have to come up with an, a new act, um, it depends. Sometimes there's shows that have a theme to it, and so I have to find a way to bring that theme out in my own like art. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm just creating something for myself, I can be inspired by anything. I can be inspired by a song. I can be inspired by like a costume idea. It's really any anything could bring inspiration as far as creating acts. Um, but in it doesn't really matter to me as far as what I'm wearing or you know or what music I'm performing to. Each time I go on stage, it's a completely new experience, and you know the costuming and the music is just all set up so I can have like a genuine one-time experience on stage each time I'm there. It's funny, I actually teach a burlesque class called Yes, But Where's the Sex? And um, I liken <laughs> a, being a burlesque performer to... <laughs> well, Yes, But Where's the Sex? That's, that should be the name like a movie and a book. Yes, <laughs> But Where's the Sex? Can you take me to dinner? Yes, But Where's the Sex? Can you give me a wedding ring? Yes! But where's the sex? Can I get something to eat? Yes! But where's the sex? It's true. Where is it? And actually, I find it to be missing in a lot of burlesque, which is really strange. So that's why I teach that class. Okay, so for example, um, your award-winning performance at the Burlesque Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, what went into that particular performance? You know how did how did how did Poison Ivory take home reigning queen of burlesque? Um, well, I'm still kind of surprised that <clears throat> I 
managed to do it. Um, I got to compete this year, and it is a long process in order to get accepted to even compete at the Burlesque Hall of Fame. And in order to compete for Queen, you had to already have performed at the Burlesque Hall of Fame before. So it is a long process. Um, and when I realized that I was accepted with the very first act that I ever created, there was some sort of connection that this could be something that was bigger than myself. And um, not that I'm super competitive, but I really wanted to take home the crown because there hadn't been a black uh, queen of burlesque ever, and there hadn't been a black Miss Exotic world for 20 years. So um, it was just kind of important to me that a woman of color, not just a woman of color, but specifically a black woman took it home. And I was competing against another performer who's been in the game for far longer than I have been. She's really Washed popular. up. No, no, <laughs> that's not Shut up, it. That's not no, it. No, you can't say that. I can say no, that. No, but you don't know. No, I don't. I'm just hating. <laughs> no, she's actually a phenomenal performer. Um, and it really is, once you're in the room on the stage that night, it is really based off of just that one performance that night. And for the judges, they were more connected to my act. And that's just pretty much how it went down. But everybody, in, in order to just be there, has to be at the top of their game just to even be accepted to compete in the first place. And, okay. And you know, well, let me say congratulations Thank for, for <laughs> taking for taking it home. Thank you. you know, I'm rep very rep proud. Representing for the sisters. Yeah. 